Welcome, one and all, to the KOE Nation for a very special spirits review, folks. As you can see, I'm here at the farm. Duty calls, as always. But your need for reviews and your need for that amazing KOE content remains constant, folks. So do not worry. I'm actually going to hand the reins over to a couple of very, very good friends of the KOE Nation for this particular spirits review. And without further ado, let's get you right to this spirit review. Hey, folks. Welcome to the Chicken Coop. We're going to try out a new one today. I have cracked it already, unfortunately. Um, we're going with Yellowstone, hand-picked collection, single barrel. Uh, this is out of Wine, Beer, and Spirits in Lincoln, Nebraska. Barreled on 324-2016. It's 109 proof. Um, I believe uh, these guys are, it's, it's, from what I read, it's supposed to be a blend. Um, so they source a uh, seven year, it sounds like, from Barton. I could be getting this wrong. Um, and then uh, a four year of their own. Um, and it's quite, quite good. We're gonna enjoy it together real quick. Um, I believe Yellowstone uh, also, I don't think I have a model of it laying around here. Uh, it's the same distillery making um, minor case uh, rye whiskey as well. Oh, let's get some glass ready to go here so when I first cracked this I had very little expectations I literally had just gotten off work wanted to crack open a new bottle and see uh, see what we're getting ourselves into there um, and I was quite quite surprised to say the least so getting back into it um, just to give an official review for y'all so the, the nose isn't like super, super crazy. It wants to be fruity, but there's like an ethanol block. It was like, it's pretty strong. So it's like trying to get past that to figure out like what the, what the actual smell of it is. It's really, really tough to get past the ethanol. But what I did notice last time after you take a drink and then go back in, it, it really clears up and it's a lot easier to get into. So without further ado, cheers. Mm. So the first time I tried it, there it is. Immediately I taste like, like a cherry pop tart. You know, like the frosting on the pop tart, and that like super sugary. Um, now I get more like a brown sugar, um, but I still get a little bit of that cherry, um, vanilla. There's a lot going on, and then it's got this like. It doles out. It really does. Um, what do they call that? Not the leather thing, like tannin? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you get that kind of in the, in the back of your mouth, but like this sweet, sugary flavor just kind of like sits in there, like a like maybe like a peach or, or a pear, like just, it just kind of hangs around in there. And then the spice, like you don't get the spice right away and it just, mmm. I'm not a fan of the spice a lot of times when it comes to bourbons. This one, though, just because of, like everything else that's going on, there's a lot going on. Uh, even even now, it's still like that spice just hangs around. You get the, the tingling feeling, but there's still a little sugar in there. Ooh, I love this stuff. Now, um, I didn't temper it down with water. I don't think it needs to, but we might try it just for science. Uh, sometimes when you get higher proof, like this one's at 109. I think some of the other store picks of this, uh, I think the, the year prior was supposed to be like a 115. Um, so depending on, on what you like for, for proofing, um, some people may want to do a dab of water in here. But... Yeah, I'm going to get the OG first. Um, there's not much in this glass, so I'm just barely going to do any water. I don't want to bring the proof down too much. I just want a couple drops. It's not thick either. There's like, it's got legs on here, but it's not oily. It is really, really thin. Um, it's, there's not a heavy, like there's no chew. Um, if that makes any sense, like it just, it goes down. It doesn't go down like water. 
um, but it's a smooth like liquid as water like it's just there's not much going on it doesn't leave a like a stickiness in your mouth almost like a dryness though because of that spice hanging out in there hitting the nose after some water oh the nose opens up vanilla big time you get a lot more oak mm, it's nice very pleasant so the nose did get better with just a couple couple drops of water it gets it caused the ethanol to kind of go out even though i was spinning it but all right let's give her a shot It's a little different. You just get straight spice. I think, I actually think adding water to it gets rid of the flavor. That's interesting. This is all spice now. You get a little bit of vanilla, but like some of that, that fruitiness, the sweetness, it really gets rid of it. it. Hides it with water. That's strange. Either way, really good. Um, so if we're gonna go on Phil's typical scales, uh, since uh, this will be on KOE Nation as well, make sure you check out Phil, youtube.com slash KOE Nation. Um, but we'll go with a, a five-star scale. First, we're going to rate this bourbon against other bourbons. On a five-star scale, I'm going to give this a solid... F mm. I got I to gotta remember because like the ones that I've given four and higher were like Blanton's and... So, you know, some big names, Elmer T. Lee's in that, in that group. This is a different monster though. You, the, like when you get a Blanton's, it's just like, oh, just, it's, it's one of those, like you, you're celebrating something. It's a very special bottle to open up. And it's so, don't want to say the word smooth, um, but it is, it's just, it's very, it's something you can easily get passionate with. This one, I think, depending on your tolerance for spice. Me, I have very low tolerance for spice. There's a lot of bourbons that I just like, ugh, too spicy, not a, not a big fan of. I'll try it with water and go from there. But this is a unique kind of spice that I actually quite enjoy, which really throws, throws me through a loop on, I'm gonna go 375 as a bourbon. I wanna go four. I really wanna go four. This is an after work hate drink. Um, not, not a hate drink like you'd think. Some people buy a shitty bottle of bourbon and then hate drink it. This is like, man, today sucked. I need something to fire me up. This is going to be my go-to bad day at work, um, bottle to open up. I'm going to have to go find another, um, because this was a specific store pick at a Lincoln. So I don't know if they'll have any left, but I'm sure we'll find more. Um, store picks of those in the future. Now, as a whiskey, uh, I would, you could do like an old fashioned with this. Um, it almost like it almost before you put water in there and the fruitiness, it almost already feels like you're drinking a cocktail. Um, so as a whiskey, I don't think there's a lot you need to do. You can mix. You could, I could see a lot of things you could do with this. Uh, I'm going to go four stars as a whiskey i'll make it up I'll make it up there since we didn't give it a four star bourbon four stars as a whiskey now as cask aged spirit is the other one so this goes against uh cognacs everything um out there with uh cask aging this um now it, I, I mentioned it doesn't specifically say on here anywhere like how long i don't believe um this is aged from what I just read online on their website, is it is a blend. They didn't specifically say, most people think it's Barton. Uh, Barton's is, is the one of the main ones. And then I saw um, other people saying that they think because of the spice and some of the flavors, it might actually be a, a high rye um, blend here. But yeah, I don't see any age statement, but if it's the seven year mixed with the four year, if it's their stuff, if it's Barton's, um, but putting it against all the wide, wide world, uh, I'm going to, I'll keep it at three, seven, five. Now I'm a bourbon heavy, ca uh, uh, cask age, uh, fan. So you give me a, you know, uh, 
uh, a cognac or something else or, or anything with these age statements, um, I'm probably not going to give them as high of a score as I do with a bourbon or a whiskey just because I'm kind of a mark for bourbons and whiskeys. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Then we move on to shelving. Is this going to go on my bottom shelf with the makes of Templeton Rye, Knob Creek Rye, um, yeah, I mean some of the ooh, some of the stuff that I just want to drink and get rid of the bottle. Or is it going to go middle shelf with Buffalo Trace Eagle Rare? Or is it going to go top shelf with Blanton's and Colonel E. H. Taylor and Booker's? Hmm. I'm going to make room on my top shelf for now. This it it definitely middle shelf. I guarantee most people would at least do middle shelf. I rather enjoy this, so it is going on the top shelf. I apologize for background noise. My microphone picks up everything in the house, and apparently my wife's home talking on the phone. All right, hopefully we don't hear everything she's saying. Anyway, this is going on my top shelf for now. Later, we'll do a review of some of these top shelves because I'm running out of room up there, and I'm gonna have to knock a couple down. Um, so that'll be fun to get to. Anyway. Thanks for visiting the Chicken Coop. Come back next time as I do have some fun ones coming up. Uh, we're going to pair up some, uh, some other ryes. We're going to go through the rye tournament with Phil here soon. Um, and yeah, we're going we're gonna to explore some bottles and knock them up and knock them down off of uh, the, the shelving over here. So again... This was a fantastic bottle, Yellowstone hand-picked collection, single barrel store pick. Let me read from here and then we'll get out of here, folks. In 2010, my family and I founded Limestone Branch Distillery with the intention of crafting only the finest whiskey and dream of restoring the Yellowstone brand to its former glory. In the spring of 2015, over a century after our great-grandfather, MC Bean sold his distillery to Yellowstone. That dream came true. Hand-picked collection is a series of single barrels each hand picked and sampled at the distillery with each barrel comes uh, its own complexity and one-of-a-kind flavors every one different than uh, than the next from our hearts to fill your glass enjoy all right there you have it folks if you find it grab it i have heard mixed reviews on this and they're saying every barrel is going to be a, a different surprise. So if that's the case, I got one of the good ones, folks. Catch you next time. to refabricate you raging rivers of gold that's what the brochure advertised and now we're lost we gotta take it down let you get them slow it's hard to survive Eldorado oh lord well, let's see how that one went. Yeah.